Today I'd like to talk about uh, carbon-14 uh, and nitrogen. However, before I do that, a couple of things I want to cover. The atomic number is the number of protons uh, in, a, in the atom of an element. And uh, that essentially uh, dictates the identity of the uh, element. The atomic mass now uh, is essentially uh, the number of protons plus the number of uh, neutrons in the uh, nucleus uh, of that atom. So it's possible that uh, two atoms can have the exact same number of protons but different number of neutrons, which means they are isotopes of the same element. Okay, so they behave the same chemically, but uh, each, uh, each atom will have a different mass. So, for example, if we have a, a nitrogen, nitrogen has uh, seven protons, okay, uh, which means it has an atomic number of seven. And uh, the most uh, common isotope, okay, will have uh, seven neutrons, okay, so it will have an atomic mass of 14. Okay, so now, one other thing to understand is that uh, nitrogen, is, which is one of the gases in the uh, Earth's atmosphere, actually uh, the most uh, common gas in the Earth's atmosphere, um, can often get hit by high energy uh, particles. Uh, one source of high energy particles is uh, cosmic rays, which um, Cosmic rays are basically uh, high-speed particles uh, zooming throughout a space, and when one enters the atmosphere, um, there's a chance that uh, some will miss and some will collide with things. Well, if a neutron collides with a uh, nitrogen uh, atom and it collides with a nucleus, sometimes it can knock essentially a proton loose and replace itself with that, uh, uh, replace a proton with itself. So essentially, now what will happen is that if it gets hit with a proton, uh, with a neutron, okay, it will knock a proton loose, and so you now have six protons, okay, and eight neutrons, okay, and what you have left is no longer nitrogen because we've changed the atomic number. In fact, it is carbon, and because it has uh, 6 plus 8 uh, protons and neutrons, it uh, now has an atomic mass of 14. Now, carbon-14 is one of the heavier isotopes of carbon, but nevertheless, it is carbon. And a lot of carbon essentially finds its way into living things, uh, combines with oxygen, becomes carbon dioxide, gets breathed in by plants, gets eaten by animals. And so it becomes part of the, uh, the food cycle and the life cycle, okay? Now, the interesting thing about uh, carbon-14 is that carbon-14 is not the most stable isotope of carbon. In fact, um, there's a probability that one of its neutrons might undergo uh, beta decay. When a neutron undergoes beta decay, the neutron, okay, essentially... Uh, turns into a proton and a W minus boson which the bo W minus boson essentially uh, decays into uh, an electron and an I and an uh, anti-neutrino okay now the chance uh, of a carbon-14 atom doing this okay is roughly about uh, 50 percent for every uh, 5,730 years, which means that if you uh, have a sample of carbon-14 atoms, after 5,730 5, years, roughly half of them will be gone, and this is what we refer to as the half-life. Okay. Now, granted. After another 5,730 years, half of the remaining will also be gone, so it will now be a quarter. Um, and so we have this exponential decay. 
Now, this exponential decay, for the most part, while an animal or plant is still alive, is really uh, not that big a factor. And the reason is because um, nitrogen is constantly uh, being uh, a certain um, a certain uh, um, percentage of the nitrogen is is being uh, converted to carbon fourteen on a regular basis in our atmosphere uh, by the cosmic rays. Um, and uh, as this goes through the food cycle, well, as the plant or animal consumes carbon, uh, the supply of carbon-14 is being replenished, so that will stay constant. However, once it dies, then we go to that uh, exponential decay, which I uh, just mentioned. So now, um, the importance of this uh, exponential decay is that it allows us to figure out how long ago this life form died. Okay, so how would we go about doing that? Well, let's say we have carbon-14 initial, which is what it started off with right at the time when it died, okay, however many years ago that was, over the carbon that's stable, which are basically the stable isotopes, okay, times one half to the T over 5730, okay, is equal to the carbon-14 final, which is carbon-14 that we measure today, over carbon uh, of the stable isotopes. Okay, so just to test this to see if that's accurate, if T is equal to 5730, then this exponent becomes 1, so um, half, okay, is what will be left after 5730 years. Okay, if it's T is twice as big as the 5,730, well, that becomes half squared, which is a quarter. So, we have that exponential decay, so we know that this is accurate. But what I'm going to do to make this easier, I'm going to call this R sub I, okay? Because, mind you, uh, the carbon stable, as its name implies, is going to stay constant. Okay, so the only thing that changes is the carbon-14 times half uh, raised to the t over 5730 is equal to r sub f. And that's just a ratio initial, and r sub f is a ratio that's final, which is what we'll be measuring. Okay, so now I'll divide by r sub i, and I'll get half raised to the T over 5730 is equal to R sub F over R sub I. And now, what I shall do, okay, I'll take the reciprocal. So, 2 to the T over 5730 is equal to R sub I over R sub F. Now, what I can do now is take a log base 2 of both sides. So, log base 2 of a uh, to relate raised to an exponent will give that exponent. So t over 5730 is equal to log base 2 of ri over rf, which means that t, which is a time in years since uh, the life form died, is going to be equal to 5730 times the log base 2 of r sub i over r sub f. And so basically that's how we calculate uh, how long ago uh, um, something died. And this information and the, or the ability to calculate this is important to uh, uh, many fields, especially uh, people such as uh, archaeologists, anthropologists, uh, paleontologists, or anyone who needs to find out how long ago uh, something died. Well, um, that's uh, all I have to say on this topic for now. I hope you find it very informative, and I would like to thank you very much for watching.